Oh, hey, this is Philip at the best way you can Today we'll talk about a couple of things. Uh, this entry level version of Modern Dog Waffle. It's a uh, particle. Particle 9 is sort of the nickname because it's elementary and it's a, um, a starting point. And there are a few things we don't do here, like animation or food layers. Um, but there are a few filters uh, to get you started. There are some selection tools, uh, masks with alpha channel, and there's also a, uh, a main image. You can see here, this is the main image, and uh, you can switch over here to the swap image. Right? So let's call this the swap image. And so th these two are almost a bit like layers that can be combined. One can uh, influence the other. You can you can add them together. You can uh, do a variety of things with that. And uh, if you look at the image menu here, or it's not so much a menu actually here. It's just all laid out in this uh, region at the top here. There is one menu system, and that's of course for uh, saving images, uh, loading them, and so on. Uh, and then there is the image area, the brush, uh, especially for custom brushes, and those can be animated. Um, so you'll see some some tools that allow you to use internal brushes. There's an internal brush. There are some other types. Use a custom brush, and then you'll have to perhaps pick some from down here at the bottom. You have a whole bunch of custom brushes to choose from. Some predefined ones. Uh, something brainy here. Um, some bristle brushes, thick and wet. Uh, this one here is some uh, smearing tools. Looks like uh, all oily. Um, there's some cross hatchy things. Uh, pencils, if you like to draw. Uh, some charcoal also. And of course, the whole thing with colors. So there's color pickers galore. There are many different types of color pickers. And um, you can go and use an uh, airbrush and a variety of others. Uh, there's some more uh, some smearing modes. Uh, and then there's also the browser down here with a whole lot of presets. And so these presets uh, you can extend with your own collection. And uh, you know, if you, for instance, you grab the hot dog as a starting point here and you want to build that into a very special hot dog, let's say something like this. Um, and you want to build your own brush with that, maybe make the white parts transparent. Um, what you could do is simply pick this up. There's a tool here on the left side in my uh, toolbars. Uh, and I'm currently in this mode with two, uh, two columns, <coughs> which is recommended if you are on a, a system with very low screen resolution, right? You wouldn't have a whole lot of vertical uh, clearance here. So if you want to change it to one column, uh, you can set the layout settings here under the view menu and uh, two column toolbar, single column toolbar and then there's also the toolbar having it on the left side or on the right side or make it a floating one. Right. So I'm going to keep it on the left and I'm going to turn it into single column. There you go. Alright, so now what I'd like to do is with this tool here, the custom brush selector tool to pick up the imagery that I currently have here and turn that into a brush. So I'm going to go around here, click and drag, and this becomes my first custom brush. And it is here now, but you see a little bit of white uh, edge around it, right? I mean, sometimes that's okay. Sometimes you actually like that uh, and you want to keep that. Um, so if, if that's the case, you want to go to the browser and make a folder for yourself. I have one here already with some, uh, my initials here for some, uh, uh, brushes uh, from the past. I'm going to go save media and say crisscross. This is crisscross 01. All right. So, uh, you know, when, when you paint with some of these uh, or just stamp them down, uh, there's a variety of ways to use them. Right button will use the secondary color and that's quite typically used to erase. Um, and that's because we have the secondary color down here as the same white as the background. Um, if you switch to two, now the secondary color is this bluish. Um, all right, so let's say we want to go back to this browser and you want to keep it around so you can pin it down here. Right? Make it convenient, make it fit your workflow, fit your screen resolution, 
fit a number of requirements large icons if you need a close look there it is again let's pick this one and so what else can we do with this custom brush well we we can uh, go to the brush menu and see some options to to work with it i mean now that we have picked it up um, we may want to make it a bit more transparent along the edges so that it doesn't show that white all right so there is a bit of uh, additional uh, functionality we might want to to put on that and uh, if you use that same tool here that we used to pick this brush to begin with what you can do is right click it and now you'll see the, um, the, the, the controls for making uh, to decide what part is transparent and how relaxed or how tight you want to be on that so you could make the inner part transparent right and so now you see uh, kind of a mask you see through that or you could uh, make it very transparent and the only thing that's left there now is a mask um, you could also go uh, pick it up on the on the outside and make the white part go transparent and you will barely see any of that white edge anymore at that point but be careful not to go too far because you might otherwise also get some transparency on that highlight the specular highlight on those uh, hot dogs that might turn transparent too so that's the art of working with um, with custom brushes and with the alpha. Now, at some point, you might be very close here, but you still have a tiny little bit of a glow, right? So let's say we don't want to go all the way here because if we do that, then we see we start seeing through those hot dogs, and hot dogs don't like to be seen through. So, <laughs> so uh, let's go and see if we can keep it like that. So sometimes what you want to do, first of all, is store this image, right? So, I mean, store this, uh, this brush. There's a couple of shortcuts here to store the current image, to store the current selection, and also to store the current custom brush. And so here it is. And uh, what we could do is um, perhaps tighten it a little bit more, right? There still is a little bit of a white edge around it. And uh, what you could do here is to actually tighten it uh, using the keyboard shortcuts, for instance, right? or grow it or shrink it. There's uh, either some options here, or if there isn't, use the keyboard shortcuts, and you might see them here under the help menu. Uh, there's probably there, keyboard shortcuts, right? So look for those that relate to brushes. And there are some brushes that allow you to tighten there, shrink the brush keying, right? So this is relative to the color keying, and you can shrink it with the curly brace, opening the curly brace, right? So let's see what that happens. If I hit the shift key and the curly brace, you can see that it's getting smaller and smaller, and there we go. We now have eliminated some of that white glow around it. Now we can also go the other way and close the curly brace and make it go bigger. And that's really useful if you want to actually show some sort of an outline around it. Right. It's currently white. You might want to make that a different color. Let's see something like this and see if that makes it. Actually, it's probably not going to take that color. It's going to take whatever was in the image as we picked it up. All right. Well, let's see if I'm wrong on that. No, I'm right on that. All right. So now what we'll do is we'll just trim this down a little bit until we are kind of happy. Um, that actually is not what we wanted. So let's go pick this brush again. Reload it. There you go. Erase to black. We see the white really strongly that way. That's a good high contrast. And now use the curly brace close to uh, to reduce it. All right, and that might be one that we also want to save. So perhaps here we'll say this is crisscross zero do two, <laughs> not do um, crisscross zero two. Okay. Now what else do we do once it's in a um, in a uh, in a stored condition here let's go make sure we store this one too right so we have a stored copy we have this one still with a little bit of white glow and this one without it well typically what you may want to do is also change the hue of that or the brightness or the saturation right so there is there's a whole lot more you can do with that brush to just make it a very different looking hot dog um, there is also let's minimize this one here there's also um, a whole bunch of uh, uh, automatic behaviors you can add to that. If you look at the brush settings, right, you need to be on the brush tool for that. You need to look in the context bar for the settings. And here they are, settings. And you may want to pin this down so it doesn't walk away. So with the settings, you have a bunch of things you can do. 
such as uh, randomly adding some position changes. And when you do that, it's kind of wiggly, right? It's not exactly along your path. No, this is not my shaky hands doing this. So we have the position, we have uh, scale, or size randomly changing, uh, and not so much actually. And the reason is that on slow computers, this might take a while. So what we do is we let you say whether you actually want that. So, so this is a custom brush and you want to indicate whether the custom brush should be allowed to transform. Positioning it is not a time consuming thing. But rotating, you want to allow that. Right? So now you have size and rotation, both of these happening also randomly. Now there's more to that. You can also randomly change the hue, and that will make it get even more uh, drastic changes, a little bit less. Um, random saturation, random value. And so overall, you have just a lot of calculations happening here. The faster your computer, the better. There's some bleed also, and that is something you might want to use with a very high value if you want it to show well. Uh, it's something that you typically use for oils to bleed together or watercolor. Uh, there's a dry out effect too, so it gradually disappears. Now let's go and uh, restore everything here and uh, disable all of these transforms. No random uh, angle, no random like this, no random stuff like that. Now, instead of doing this just tediously one by one, right? What you could do is simply choose a different brush, such as a I don't know basic uh, hard edge single line, something like that. You can barely see it; it's so fine. And then click on that again, and it goes back to the default settings for that. All right, so uh, one thing I want to also show is just the transform as a result of which direction you're painting in. So do allow it to transform. And right now it's a very small size, right? Because the scale is still down here, very small from the prior brush. And so maybe we want it smaller, maybe we want it bigger. And I'm going to go something like this here. All right. Or if you leave it at 100%, there is no extra scaling needed, and so it's a little bit faster that way. Uh, it might even be faster to paint it at 100% scale. Right? So that experience may vary. That depends a lot on the speed of your computer, the graphics, um, a lot of things here, not so much under our control. Um, but what you can see is that we do allow transforms at this point, and I'm going to go and look at some of these options up here for the brush control. In particular, use the direction of pointers motion to determine the angle of the brush. All right, so now it's actually, as I'm going in a circle or arcs, it's turning around with that. Uh, there's also some smoothing on that. You can set, uh, go to the view and uh, select some additional options, program settings here, and, and see, for instance, uh, if the GUI has some extra smoothing and uh, whether you want to see the custom brush as just a bounding box or actually see the custom brush, we would have to ap uh, apply that to make it happen. Uh, there's a couple of other uh, options. There, smooth scaling. That's the uh, scaling of the pixels as you zoom in. Right? So you see a bit of a, a smoothing on that, whereas if you don't smooth, uh, it's uh, showing the pixels uh, unchanged. And it just uh, replicating them. Um, there are some, uh, there's some spline based input here that's doing a little bit of smoothing and that's what I was looking for. So if you if you don't do the spline base, it's perhaps a little bit more erratic on small changes. Um, and with the spline base it might be a little bit smoother. It still is pretty nervous, right? It's still doing a, a lot of wacky stuff here. By the way, talking about wacky stuff, uh, we can also take this into uh, sort of kaleidoscopes. There is an option up here um, to enable the symmetry tool and uh, you can go for instance a kaleidoscope mode and let's say you want seven or eight kaleidoscope lines and you can paint into all of these directions at the same time. Um, let's go make it a little bit smaller. Let's make this brush like this. So now you can see here it's drawing that thing in eight directions at the same time. 
Um, there is also a symmetry mode of a different nature. Let's clear it here and say we want just a horizontal mirror and maybe even the vertical mirror. So uh, what you're painting is in the upper right quadrant and it's appearing in the other quadrants at the same time. Right, right button, left button. Uh, let's change the hue of the brush. The hue is right here. Let's give it a bit more of a yellowish. Again, back to that hot dog look. And so there's a lot of fun stuff to explore here to create some wacky patterns and background shapes and so on. Um, all right, so we've got some ideas of painting, right, and exploring the vast uh, choices that we have in terms of uh, different types of brushes. Uh, there's also some post effects you can apply if you enable those post effects, uh, such as a gel style, it will do a bit more of a uh, embossed look. And then let me turn the, the mirroring off so it's a bit easier to see. Um, so other things you can do with that is sort of a gouache mode. And let's go and turn that off and just paint with this. Um, and then you also have um, something like a watercolor mode. And the watercolor, you can see it's a little bit transparent as a translucent watercolor even more so. But more importantly, uh, you can also have it bleed with, uh, with the underlying image already there. And so there's a pigment uh, blending or bleeding that you can have a pigment, um, uh, oh, I forget what the right word is here, lifting there, there's a pigment lift. So how much pigment do you want to actually put into it? And then how much of the old colors underneath it should be lifted and blended through? So you see a sort of a smearing effect. Now the brush itself is adding some more uh, complexity to that and that makes it even more sophisticated and sometimes a bit too sophisticated so let's let's not do too much there but you can see how you can use that to create a, a blur brush where you just brush over it and it's blurring the whole thing. Alright so those are some of the intros, uh, some of the basic brushes, there are a lot more. Um, let's go and explore, for instance, down here again, some of the other brushes that uh, you can see already existing. Uh, pastels, uh, art favorites, lots of different types of brushes. And then as you explore, you'll notice that there are some which are based on particles. Uh, there are stickers also. Uh, so these are collections of images from a, a French artist, Michel Agulot, who makes these stickers into really sticking stickers that you can put uh, on walls, uh, vinyl stickers. And I encourage you to look up his website and see perhaps if you need something to decorate your, your kids' uh, uh, rooms, hobby rooms, kitchen, whatnot. Um, and in fact, sometimes there are some interesting items right here in this collection. There's also some uh, unique brushes. Um, we've seen the tube or the hot dog. Uh, that was one of them. Uh, there's a couple of others. And uh, some of these are animated brushes that cycle through changes in color and shapes and sizes. There's an oil fire, sort of an oily fire thing. Uh, that one could be really useful if you want to create some sort of a smoke effect, right? All you need to do is turn off the hue and it's a, a grayish version, right? So let's take a look at that. Let's go to settings and um, uh, turn back to the main uh, controls, the main tab and uh, set the saturation. Now, we don't really set the saturation in here to zero. What you do is you, you store it. So go to uh, this option here store a copy of the custom brush because this is a, a, a custom brush it might even be an animated one let's go check this out show film strip yep sure enough there are here a whole bunch of images uh, this is an animated brush right or anim brush is another way to describe it and uh, it contains contains the a sequence of images so as you're painting it's cycling through those um, you, you can make them go cycle through that a little bit faster by reducing the step distance, then it's going to go like this. Uh, or you can have them take a little bit longer and increase the step distance, and then you know it's going to take a much longer distance to travel with that brush stroke before they disappear. Um, you could, uh, for instance, set this, let's see, what do we have here, step 13, let's go to about 5 or 6 or so. 
and so here, yep, you can definitely tell here it's fading, but not as fast as the original did. So let's say we want to turn this into a gray smoke trail. Uh, let's go back to close to what we had initially. Uh, I think it was two. I'm going to go to three. So a little bit longer trail than the original. There you go. And I, I want to have this turn into a grayish smoke trail. So um, what I'll simply do is I'll go to that stored brush. And I don't need to see the film strip. Let's hide it. But what I want to do in that stored brush is uh, reduce the saturation. Right? If you think about it, we have the hue saturation value here. The hue we could change too if you wanted a slightly different color on that, right? More of a bluish smoke trail. But if you want it dark, you have either the brush, uh, the saturation, or the uh, the value, or both. Right? If you make it brighter, it's going to be more like this. And if you make it darker, that's already looking uh, pretty dandy, pretty good. Okay. And then of course, if you don't like the bluish tint, it still has. What you do is you work on that saturation right here is highly saturated and if you were to increase the, the color you would see that uh, but what i'll do here in this case is uh, reduce the color still keep it relatively dark but most importantly also reduce the saturation right, so now we have purely gray smoke trails and so that's some of the things you can do with the custom brushes but there are many more things to explore and uh, you'll see that there is also a category of brushes down here called watercolors and um, particles and bristles and there are actually more particles and bristles are two out of total of four categories that are belonging to the particle brushes and there's actually uh, next to the, the settings here there's also an extra collection of uh, particles and those are exactly those those are the particles I'm talking about so let's focus on that a little bit we have uh, four categories of particle brushes and you can decide which ones you want to enable let's first of all pin this down so it stays here and so particle brushes here are let's go enable that and by default it's well I actually used one earlier so it still remembers that but you can click on load and see them here uh, and choose a different type right now these here are showing just by their names uh, in uh, version 10 of uh, PD artist or PD howler uh, we actually have switched to a graphical interface for that part too for the previews right, so um, you will still operate this very nicely but uh, it's just a slightly different experience all right so some of these particle brushes are great for grass there's one called baddie grass and um, you can simply draw from the back to the front and, and voila now sometimes you want to create assets with this right you want to have a little tuft of grass uh, and you want to have this on transparent background so you can use it as an image like a png save it to a png file with transparent background well what you do is you need to tell it to also generate the alpha channel the, the alpha is where uh, the opacity or transparency value for each pixel will be stored. So you need to switch the style here to, uh, to include alpha. Uh, if it was a line initially, go to line plus alpha. Right, so now the same drawing here is going to switch to, you see the marching ants here? Uh, and you can also switch to a, uh, another style to, to display the, the alpha presence. Uh, you can uh, enable uh, what's called the uh, it's a select by store clear selection uh, where was that there is an option somewhere to uh, oh maybe it's under the view uh, no it's not there I remember seeing that the other day marching ants there it is visibility right do you show the marching ants or not see here how we're seeing the marching ants and if you hide them well the mask is still there it's just not showing right and then here uh, color overlay same thing right so you can you can see it as a color overlay with or without marching ants and sometimes that's a, a really better way to work with it but keep in mind the marching ants uh, is just an indication of where the transition is between fully transparent and fully opaque it's it's not a sharp line it's a transition line it's uh, 50 percent of opaque or translucent it's like the glass is half full or half empty it's exactly at the limit of the where the water is in that glass uh, red wine or whatever you put in there 
milk perhaps but uh, what what we have with the marching ants is an indication of where that that halfway separation is between fully opaque and fully transparent uh, in this case it's fully transparent on the outside and it gets that uh, purple or, or pink uh, uh, overlay look the color overlay and that's really useful too so uh, I'm gonna go clear this now but the alpha is still there right so as you paint some more you can see how that's that's adding and if you want to clear it all you can clear the alpha but you also need to clear i mean you can clear the image the rgb channels but you have to clear the alpha as well so in the selection menu you can say clear selection all right so we're back to painting here let's go grab one more different type of brush maybe some winter branches something like this here again <clears throat> some of these are particle brushes that are preset with some values and you can you know, uh, please explore this. this. These are numbers you can play with and see what happens. For instance, if you want them to be a little bit stocky and shorter, um, what you do is you keep uh, keep the lifespan shorter. Right now it's a six, let's make it a three or two. So it's a much shorter, smaller element, right? Uh, you want it to be a little bit tinted, uh, add some tinting color to that. Uh, and whatever the primary color is, is what it's going to take. So uh, click on that if you want it to be a little bit more of a bluish tint towards the back there. And it's very subtle, but it will grab that. Um, you can also uh, change the gain. There you go. You can see a little bit more of the bluish tint now. Um, you can see uh, sometimes uh, some of these will have control of the size. These definitely do. Let's go to longer lifespans. Let's say seven or eight. So now you see that, uh, and I'm going to go clear and do a few more. Uh, what I want to do is have it very thin and also more erratic. It's a bit too methodical here, a little bit more too predictable. So what I want to do is a bit more randomness to it, and there's an option called randomize values by this much. Let's give it by 0 0.5 uh, or even by 1 or 2 just to see the extremes. Right? And so that's that's how you can play with these. There's some gradients to play with as well. So that will give you slightly different coloring because the color changes along those paths, along those particle paths. Uh, you know, let's have a look at one more, the weeds. Uh, you see a whole set of tufts of weeds, of gra tall grass you can place here or there. And if you want a different color, just make it so. You know? There's a lot of different things to explore here. Um, the, the tinting, the gain, everything here can have an impact on your creativity. Um, there is uh, some, some other options like a force field. Uh, and that's if you, if you use an existing image to deflect the particles as they are shooting out. Right? right now, the lifespan says how long they stay alive, but the terminal or the initial velocity here says how fast they shoot in the first place. So if you increase that, you have a much wilder appearance here, like a mohawk uh, on somebody's head. And um, what you could do at that point is uh, perhaps uh, make it not so uh, clean, but rather erratic. And you could actually use this image that we just painted here as the force field for the next image. So I'll simply click on force field, and now it's using uh, the gradient here is using this image as a gradient to deflect my particles as I continue to paint it. Now it may be very subtle, right? So it may not show like that much, but uh, what I need to do is uh, perhaps have it, uh, let's see, over here, uh, contour or value based, and, and oh, I guess it's not actually doing it. I must be missing out something here. Okay, well, there's a couple of other options. There's also the age decrement. And that's to make it look a bit more like uh, roots that are um, thinning down a little bit faster. See how as I'm painting, initially they're big and then they get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. That's uh, Every time they die and they respawn, um, they tend to get smaller. If I don't do that, they stay at their size every time keep going and going and going right? and now if I make it I don't know if I can give it a negative let's say 0 0.5 it's an initial size yeah it's not getting bigger okay so but on the other hand if you do give it a positive value let's say one or two it's getting smaller pretty quickly right? so you know, something like this and actually that's really useful for roots 
right? If you want to show some sort of a, a root system on the surface and it's going farther away as, as smaller as it's farther away from the, the center. Uh, so, so that's uh, an interesting feature to explore as well. Um, so that's with particle brushes and there are variants to the particle brushes. There's a whole collection of bristle brushes here and some presets to wash it out to make it a, a bristled appearance. Uh, I'll let you play with that. There are also orbitals which are uh, hilariously different and intriguingly uh, sophisticated. Kind of my cat attitude. <laughs> and um, this actually has uh, evolved quite a bit in version 10 as well, so I explore uh, this with some uh, memories of how it started, but there are a lot more features now, uh, including control uh, with audio to control the size of this. Um, but there is also finally the foliage brushes, and that's probably why you're here. Right? The foliage brushes, uh, they will let you draw foliage, a complete tree on a single brush stroke. Right, including some uh, environment lighting. This is uh, self-shaded uh, or, or global illumination or environment. Or what's the right word? Uh, ambient, ambient occlusion. Right. So if you if you look at it, um, this gives it nice uh, 3D appearance, and uh, you can make a whole bouquet of these, a beaucoup bouquet. bouquet. Uh, let's do something here. Let's go clear this and draw one like that, and then draw another one. And you see where it's dense, it might turn a little bit darker. And now this is already pretty dark, so we won't show that much more. Let's do something different. Let's see what else we have here. Evergreens, herbs, let's see what these herbs look like. Those are nice. Okay, and so you can see how every time you draw, it gets darker where it's really dense. And and that's because uh, it's, it's actually a 3D structure and it's self-lighting with the global with the uh, ambient occlusion, so it, it gives you a chance to make it look a bit really 3D-ish in depth. Now, like we did with grass, you might want to have some uh, transparency mask on that, right? So that you can actually save this as an asset uh, into a PNG file and have the, the white background be transparent. That's also done here with Create Alpha. Enable that. And so now as you draw one brush stroke, this becomes an asset you can easily, uh, first of all, pick it up as a custom brush. Right, right here from the brush menu, pick up, select it. And then if you disable the particle brushes or the foliage brushes, uh, you now can see that you have picked this up. And it's it's usually a, a pretty dandy, uh, almost perfect appearance there. It still has a little bit of a glow with that white background. And that's something you can actually eliminate. Uh, there, there are some options here in the brush. Uh, to work with that, uh, they're not as sophisticated or advanced as they are with uh, a PD particles or a PD howler. But uh, there are some some options here. For instance, we saw earlier the keyboard shortcut. Uh, what was it? Shift uh, curly brace open. And so if you do that, you can see. Well, okay. So it gets a little bit smaller, but it allows you to get rid of that that alpha or that that transitional alpha to glow. All right, so you have some great tools here to explore. Let's load one more of these uh, foliage brushes. There's a willow tree here, uh, or actually more of a, a small bush, um, something like this. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Windblown tree. Oh, that's awesome. Right, and actually, um, there's a whole collection of these you can find on our website to add to your set. I'm not sure exactly when they came about, but I seem to recall there were more of those, the windbone. There's only about three or four here, and I think we have easily 20 or so that were added. So check on our website for more of this, more of the same and similar. Um, all right, so these are the, particle, the, the family of particle brushes. Let's do one last evergreen. Ah, yeah, those are the ones I was thinking about. Okay, so let's say you want to create something like this as a as an asset, right? As a uh, image with transparent background. So you enable the alpha, and uh, who knows? Maybe you do a little bit of color queuing because you need it on Mars with a reddish tint. And there it is. And so you can pick this up, uh, pick up selected, and disable the particle settings. And now you have this brush. Make sure you store it, that's over here, 
so that you can then also contemplate uh, perhaps uh, changing a couple of things such as the um, the, the hue of this so I'd make it a little bit more reddish or more bluish or something like that here's a more purplish tint uh, perhaps a, a little bit more on the value as well hue saturation and value and so now you have a different one here and again uh, shift curly brace to reduce a little bit some of that white glow uh, that's again something that uh, on the more professional side you'll be able to do better with PD artists where we have some keying uh, adjustments. Uh, there is probably some of it here um, under the view menu we have some gradient controls. Um, you could possibly work with that at times um, in the brush system. Uh, there are some options here where you can um, resample the brush and then sometimes that reduces it a little bit but if you're concerned about those glows what I recommend is you work on something that's closer to the color you might use in your final uh, scene right? if, if your scene is mostly dark don't go uh, creating images on white background like these assets you should probably make them on a black or, or dark uh, dark color uh, so something like this here yeah. for instance if you're on planet Mars here again uh, with a bit of a reddish tint, go do a dark brown for the background and erase through that. And then, as you enable the particle brush again, uh, you know that this glow effect is no longer going to be a, a bright glow. Now, in this case, it is because we have the color cue still. I'm going to undo that and, and do one more here, and that should be a little bit better. There you go. So now we have. A, a nice appearance for the for the for the bush here or the tree but we also have uh, and, and we can pick this custom brush manually or automatically here yeah, I'm gonna go grab a manual maybe I don't need the bottom parts so I'm gonna trim it down here don't, don't keep all the way to the bottom something like this and uh, with that I now have a, a piece of uh, an asset that I can use very nicely uh, especially on relatively dark background and it's not too bad if I if I actually switch to a bright background and um, let's say I clear the selection mask uh, clear selection and and I want to paint with this you see it's not bad first of all I don't see this uh, this white glow anymore well because it is a dark glow and it's a relatively dark uh, green also a dark uh, bush so it, it is not going to be a nuisance to have a dark glow if any right so so think about how you want that that uh, piece of property that asset uh, used in your game is it going to be on a scene with relatively dark content or relatively bright try to kind of mimic that environment and you'll have much less of a problem with it all right so uh, that's that we have brushes we've seen a bunch of them we have a couple of um, other tools on the selection side. Uh, let's do just one more thing here. Let's draw some graphical objects, right? And with graphical, I mean things like a title. Uh, that might be the menu of your game. Uh, you might have some some text here, like play and uh, uh, invite. If you want to, if you if you're developing a game where others can join, uh, and then uh, and then I don't know, exit or something like that. Uh, so you have some some text, some titles and you need to to click on the font uh, editor here to 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 select the font you want and let's say this one let's make it bold let's make it a little bit bigger right something like this and and then we can grab the lower right corner and that's still too far away so maybe we click here hit delete hit click here hit delete so we have the three parts of our menu and we might still want to have it a little bit bigger or smaller or uh, it's just perfect so there's a couple of different ways to use this text we can apply it as is or uh, set it as alpha click on alpha and then apply text now depending on your zoom it might be a little bit off you can always use Control shift to move around right but it uh, looks like also we were cutting off the bottom here so let's undo this and to do that again let's say show text box one more time see we're probably too close at the bottom here so let's go and do something like this give it a bit margin at the bottom all right i want the alpha set alpha 
apply text so now we have the alpha channel we can control right click to move this around a little bit what that what's important is that i want to do something through that alpha and i may want to store that selection mask the alpha of the selection mask can be stored so there's a shortcut over here store a copy of the selection it's a good little uh, habit to have so you can quickly get back to it right because what if you if you move this away or you know you get it messed up uh, in fact you can even paint on this right over here and you can replace this right so it has that additional selection here but um, let's let's go and uh, work with this and say we didn't mess this up we now simply want to go to the selection tool and do a few things with it such as for instance blur the alpha so it's not such a crisp transition or we can adjust it adjust the you know contrast and stuff like that um, let's go however focus on perhaps making it grow a little bit so I'm gonna go get the alpha as it's currently standing and then grow it to a little bit bigger two or three units and then uh, store that one as well so that's this option here so now I have two stored alpha images uh, this one here I can replace to the smaller and this one here I can replace to the bigger or I can subtract this one I can subtract this and so I'm left with the difference which is sort of a boolean operation right a, a difference pixel for pixel of what the alpha values were and that you might use to for instance erase right click on the erase tool here and clear only inside the selection for instance make it white so everything here is erased to white then you can go back to the smaller one replace just the inside and perhaps erase that to black right so you can go to erase selected to black and that's how you can create some really interesting um, uh, titles uh, let's say we make the right color uh, kind of a purplish here or uh, yellow whatever your favorite here so you see yellow is the secondary color so now I'm gonna right click and erase not to black specifically but whatever the secondary color is and we get this kind of appearance all right so what else can we do we can emboss it there are some tools for the alpha for the selection to emboss by that we can do a drop shadow we can emboss we can create a glow around it all right let's do the embossing for instance first a fairly big one and then perhaps invert the alpha um, there it is invert and replace it so now we have the inside and I'm going to do another uh, embossing on that but only on a small level and so we get a little bit of a raised edge on that All right so that creates a nice little uh, embossed raised edge look then the whole thing we may need to have a shadow drop underneath it so let's grab the uh, original uh, actually the bigger one of the two this one here let's uh, replace this one and do a shadow drop so we have drop shadow and uh, we can adjust the fuzziness and you can see the drop shadow here in the preview the opacity uh, how much of an offset you want all that stuff here inverted sometimes you need it on the inside uh, or it is on the inside and you need to invert it so here we go let's go clear the selection and uh, we now are looking at the title that's a respectable title to to use in some of your video games and um, that's certainly an important tool the text but there's other types of graphics especially here in the linear tool and uh, or this one here um, both of these have a, a capability to draw lines actually only this one does sorry i'll take this back here just the the, the curve tool has the ability uh, to draw lines of a different type right by default the lines you're drawing are whatever your current brush contains let's say you have a brush uh, let's go back to that uh, what was it uh, a hot dog or boingly or butterflies let's try the, the butterfly let's see what that looks like yeah, there's some butterflies here so whatever is in that brush as you're painting with it it's going to uh, let's set the step distance a little bit smaller so you see the butterflies going around here and if you're thinking um, uh, let's draw a straight line we can do that with the uh, linear tool right here go from here to here and you see it's going to go exactly along that path uh, of course it may have some random position changes with the settings such as we've seen here you can say random position and then so a straight line it no longer is it has a little bit of back and forth and, and changes to that uh, you can set the size a little bit different 
uh, and you can see now how it's really not a perfect line because of that random position. But um, so that's that's one nature or one type of uh, linear tool. Same with the curve tool. You can click a couple of curves and a couple of points, and it makes a curve. And then you can tell it to draw along that. Finish it up by drawing or brushing along that brush stroke along that. You can grab these points, and that's really where the curve tool is immensely powerful. Especially if you're an illustrator or a graphic designer, you'll want to explore that as well. Uh, but you don't want that necessarily with the butterflies, right? If you do something like this here uh, and render it along, that's great, but that's may, that may not be what you want. So what I would recommend is you also try the other mode, which is in addition to the, uh, oh, you know what? It might not even exist here. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll be, I'm stifled, stifled. <laughs> I, I thought we had it in here, but or maybe it's a different shortcut icon. Uh, but we do have in PD Howler and PD um, uh, Artist, uh, at least version 10, uh, we do have some extra options on that. So, but this is already going to keep you busy. Don't <laughs> don't be uh, don't be sad here. There's plenty of options here uh, to draw and even to simulate uh, the pressure of tablet, right? When you draw with tablets, usually if you draw a single brush stroke, uh, it wouldn't appear like this. Uh, it would be smaller at the beginning, and then as you press harder and go faster, uh, it may change the size and then thin down at the end when you lift, when you're ready to lift the, the pen and apply less pressure. So uh, something like that, you can actually simulate. Uh, whether it's with butterflies in the brush or, or something like, uh, no, let's go with one of those brushes here, All right? So something like this looks nice, but it doesn't look like it was drawn with a tablet. And if you want, you can actually make it look a bit more tablet-y, if that's the right word. So uh, what you do is you uh, tell it, uh, with, the, um, with this curve tool, you tell it to go and uh, do the drawing automatically. This is freehand draw curve. Rather than placing one point at a time like this, you go to uh, clear this and then freehand draw curve. So it draws a curve, but it doesn't do yet anything. Here you could grab these points later if you want to change them. But what we really want to do is uh, draw something along that path. And that something could be either drawn as a finish, right, or it could be brushed as a finish that will paint with a change in the size. So it starts small, goes big, and gets small again. And now we would like that to happen automatically. All right, so right now it doesn't, but if we tell it here under the auto category, we can do the automatic without changing the scale, or we can do it with changing the scale. And voila, we are now simulating somewhat what you could achieve with a tablet and we just save you three or four hundred dollars, right? <laughs> so I do think seven dollar ninety nine is a good bargain for this uh, software. What you can do with this is absolutely marvelous because you can paint um, things like this. Let me show you a little skull, a pirate skull here, right? And ask yourself, can your existing paint program do this? Or more importantly, can it do the mirroring at the same time. Let's go to the mirror and say horizontal mirror, right? And as you're painting, can it do that at the same time? Let's go do one little funky thing here. Let's go, right? And then some big eyes here, and then some sliver eyes, and then I know something weird, and some alien esque long neck. And, and then here it's, it's all good, we do have four fingers, but we're still friendly. Uh, so <laughs> what you see here is just a lot of power packed into this little program. And um, I, I invite you to play with it and uh, have at it. It is fun, it is very powerful. And it is called Particle 9 because it's elementary. So uh, it came from outer space as we tend to believe. Uh, it is part uh, of and powered by Project Dog Waffle. Uh, it does have a few filters, not everything we ever created, but uh, on occasion we release uh, some new ones. We do have the, the plasma noise here, so you can create space art with that. Uh, particularly useful if you want to uh, create something 
that uh, that might be some some glowing plasma clouds out in in space and uh, so uh, go have fun with that the filters the selection mask the brushes and tons of tools over here to uh, be creative and um, we we would love to see what you do with it please don't uh, keep this a best kept secret uh, make some games and uh, tell the world so uh, you're using project dog waffle to create some of these assets all right thank you very much for watching this has been a very long lengthy uh, tutorial uh, we'll uh, see you next time